Welcome back to more Warhammer lore. We will be continuing on our Dark Elf lore with a look into their religion, particularly the Cult of Cain. It is of note that the Dark Elves are not the only worshippers of Cain. Oddly enough, the elven god Cain has a following amongst the humans of the Empire, whom have formed small cults devoted to the bloody-handed god in their own way, often associating Cain as the brother of Mor, whom vies for control of the underworld with the Lord of the Dead. But we're not here to talk about the humans, so on to the cult of Cain, as worshipped by the Dark Elves. Now, Caleb and Cain, the bloody-handed god, or simply Cain, is the elven god of violence, cruelty, blood, and murder. Having long abandoned all the other elven gods, the Dark Elves are a society built around the celebration of his murderous nature. For more information on Cain or any of the other elven gods, see my elven pantheon video. I will have it um, linked in the description. The center of the cult of Cain lies within Harganath. Now, in my previous Dark Elf video, I did touch on this, so I will be retreading some of the um, same lore, but just bear with me, it gets better. <laughs> Harganath, the City of Executioners, or the City of Cain, is a cursed place dedicated to the worship of the bloody handed god. The madness overtook this city long ago, a thirst for blood and flesh that has ever since only been kept in check by some of the strictest laws in all of Nagaroth. Only in Harganath are such acts as murder, thievery, and public debauchery considered to be crimes. A hard burden to bear for a people so steeped in thoughtless depravity. Worse, under Harganeth law, there is but a single penalty for any infraction. The transgressor is led in chains to the summit of the highest sacrificial pyramid and beheaded. There can only be one punishment in Cain's chosen city. Only the foolish or the clever are lawbreakers, and it is not always possible to tell the two apart until the executioner's blade sweeps down. The truly clever have made an elegant escape long before this point. This situation certainly does not mean that the rivalry and crime is less prevalent in Harganath than in any other city. It is merely conducted in a different manner. The Dreadlords long ago learnt that commissioning a murder is likely to end in their death as it is that of their victim. Therefore they concentrate upon tricking rivals into acts of lawbreaking that can only be answered by the executioner blade. Such plots are seldom anything other than subtle, and they can take years to finally reach fruition. Harganath is a den of shadow politics like no other, where every request or concession is merely a piece in a wider game of disgrace and death. There is one being in all of Harganath whom is above its many laws. Crone Hellebron has ruled the city almost since its founding and sees no reason to obey her own dictates. While she invites petitions from those who would purchase a portion of her immunity for suitable favors, naturally, such requests are few and far between. It takes a scoundrel of a particularly bold sort to barefacedly admit law-breaking intent to she who is the supreme enforcer. As you heard from this passage, Harganath being the center of the cult of Cain makes it unique amongst the Dark Elves, and is not unheard of for the devoted to make a pilgrimage to the city in the same way you would make a pilgrimage to Altorf to gaze upon the great temple of Sigmar. Though instead of donating money and food, your offerings to Cain are of a much grislier nature. As seen in the Malice Darkbike novels, which I will be pulling a great deal of my information from, pilgrims or followers of Cain bring severed heads and limbs to dedicate to their god, and often great stacks of heads can be seen on the street corners throughout the city, stacks so high as to crush the older skulls beneath them, forever casting a cloud of bone dust throughout the streets. Another grisly practice, well, festival of sorts, which is practiced within the city of Harganath, is Death Knight. Death Knight also happens in the other Dark Elf cities, but it is of most note in Harganath. Death Night is a time that happens once a year where the Witch Elves descend upon the streets of their cities in unbridled celebration of their bloody lord. This event is a time of terror for all in Nagaroth. The boulevards and alleys echo with manic drumming and shrill pipes, while thick clouds of blood-red incense drift around twisted mansions. Through the smoke prowl, roving brands of Witch Elves murder in their hearts. Under the direction of their Hag Queens, they steal away any Dark Elves they find, often breaking into houses to drag the inhabitants to their bloody altars. It is on Death Night, the reinvigorating 
by the uh, blood of the slain that the Hag Queens are at their most beautiful and frenetic. Over the course of the following year, they slowly revert to their true haggard appearance, but for this one night, they are wanton avatars of lustful slaughter, true daughters of Cain. So Death Knight is essentially the purge, <laughs> but for the Dark Elves, and it is all the more brutal within Harganath, as there are far more worshippers of the bloody-handed god within its walls. Now, before we go any further, I would like to touch on the structure of the temples and in what capacity the Acolytes serve. And we will start at the top with Helebron, whom was also mentioned in the earlier passing. Crone Helebron, the Blood Queen of Harganath, is one of the most ancient of the Hag Queens and second only to Marathi and Cain's sight. However, while the youth and beauty of Marathi never fades, that of Helebron is now almost expended for the hag sorceress deliberately withheld from her the deepest secrets of using the cauldrons of blood. Therefore, ever more sacrifices are needed to fill Helebron's cauldron each year, and yet the rejuvenating effects last for less and less time. Once beautiful of beyond measure, the Blood Queen must now endure many dark months with the visage of an old and ugly crone for each stolen day of vibrant youth. It is chiefly for this reason that Helebron hates Marathi and her wrath as the deception is only deepened by the knowledge that she would have performed the exact same betrayal had their positions been reversed. So it is that for many nights of the year, Helebron holds court hooded and cloaked to conceal her haggard appearance. Only her closest attendants are permitted to see the full horror of her aged and withered form, and they are sworn to silence under pain of death. It is only on the days following death night where her flesh and form are renewed to full vigor, the Helebron walks the world unveiled, reveling in the power and sensations of youth. Those who wish a boon of her are well advised to seek it in this brief window of joy, for at other times her mood is capricious and sour, and his audience with her is very likely fatal. Ugly and worn as she may be, Helebron remains the greatest of the Brides of Cain. Her mastery of the many ways of murder eclipses even that of Marathi, who is often too distracted by her sorcerer's pursuits and far outstrips the skill of the other hag queens. It is she who leads the lord of murder's unholy rites and dictates the holy creed that all witch elves must follow. She is so steeped in the ways of death that her merest touch can kill, and a single whispered word from her withered lips can open up old wounds to bloody life. Wherever Helebron treads, the gaze of Cain follows. Inevitably, insane fervor sweeps over all those in her path, driving not only the witch elves, but dark elves of all callings into a maddening frenzy fit to drown the world in blood. It is a testament to Helebron's devotion to her god that she exudes this frenzy aura associated with her deity, and this not only will affect dark elves, but it has been known to kindle some savage spark among other elves in the heat of battle as well. The Blood Queen is said to be ancient, and indeed she is much older than you would believe. She was present during the Sundering as one of the first temple assassins trained by the Cult of Cain. She actually had a twin sister back then, and they were summoned by Marathi to kill the Shadow King, Aelith Anar, to which they were somewhat successful. But this is not about the Shadow King. All you need to know is that her sister fell in battle, and through her fury she killed whom she believed was the Shadow King and was greatly rewarded by Marathi. And as you can see, many years later, Helebron has greatly risen in stature amongst her people as the leader of the Cult of Cain. And now would be a good time to delve into the Cauldrons of Blood, as this is how Helebron has stayed alive for as long as she has. To understand the Cauldrons, you must understand how magic works, particularly in Druchi society. Now, to understand why magic is such a closely guarded secret, amongst the Druchi, you must understand that Malekith is at heart to blame. See, there was a prophecy told about a great leader betrayed by his people, destined for vengeance, that would be betrayed and murdered by a sorcerer, a male sorcerer. And so Malekith has made it illegal for men to practice magic, and by proxy, all mages have been formed into covens as to keep a closer eye on them, just to make sure no men slip in. These are mostly seen over by Marathi. Marathi then gifted these cauldrons to the Temple of Cain, which are used by the Death Hags and high-ranking members of all of the cults as both a holy relic and essentially a fountain of youth. When the Witch Elves gather up offerings to Cain, 
they are often brought to a death hag that then through various means empties out the vessel's blood into the cauldron and through incantations and various additional ingredients is brought to a boil whereupon the death hags submerge themselves in the blood and are reinfused by the dark magics held in the cauldron with youth and vigor. The cauldron can also be used to make witches brew. Death hags are the priestesses of the witch elves, the guardians of Cain's mysteries. It is they who mix the noxious potions that drive the witch elves into their battle rage and they who craft the poisons at which they taint their blades. They also know how to wield the secret names of their god as obscene weapons that can befuddle their foe or strike them down with madness. Now the Death Hags are right below Hellebron. As you can see, they are essentially the high-ranking clergy within the cult. It is also of note that there is in fact a council of elders that help steer the temple both diplomatically and spiritually that is made up of both male and female Dark Elves um, devoted to Cain. They serve as advisors to Crone Hellebron, and it is not completely known if they rank above or below the Death Hags. Now moving on to the Witch Elves, also known as the Brides of Cain. They are the cruelest of all their heartless race, for they live only to serve Cain's malevolent demands for bloody agonizing sacrifice. Their observances to the Lord of Murder are blood-slicked affairs, still beating hearts are ripped from victims' chests and hurled into fires. Writhing flesh is daubed with gore red runes, and altars are desiccated with the entrails of dying captives. Yet ceremonies are but a part of the witch elves' worship. Their truest observances take place upon the field of battle. On the eve of war, witch elves drink blood laced with poisonous herbs, driving them into a divine frenzy. While it's in this god-touched state, witch elves give no thought to their own defense, and seek only to hack foes apart in a bloody drenched orgy of slaughter. There is little grace to such an assault, merely a whirling storm of venom-coated blades that slash at the foe with maddened fury. Those enemies unfortunate enough to survive their wounds are rounded up by the witch elves at the battle's end. These poor souls are torn apart in wild victory celebrations, their blood offered in libation to the ever-thirsting Lord of Murder. Witch elves make up the more elite bulk of the Temple of Cain, and are usually recruited on death night as young female elves. Their family is usually murdered, and if they are not made a sacrifice to the bloody-handed god, they are trained in the ways of death and war and secret rites and regiments only known to the Witch Elves. The next run in the Cult of Cain are the Executioners. The Executioners are some of the deadliest fighters within Harganath. It was in Harganath that the first ceremonies of execution were ever held. In the wake of a great victory over the High Elves, the guards of Harganath led thousands of captives to the pinnacle of the temple and beheaded them with full ceremony and ritual. Such was the Dark Elves' delight when they beheld the bloodied heads tumbling down the steps that from that day forth, executions became a regular feature in Harganath society and a punishment for all manner of diverse crimes. So adept have the guards of Harganath become at their bloody art, they are now notorious throughout Nagaroth as the Executioners. Each spends half his waking day in his duties as sentry, and the other half practicing with his blade. This occasionally takes a form of ritual sparring between different Executioners, but more often involves the honing of death blows upon luckless captives and miscreants. The Executioners are not frantic butchers, but rather cold-blooded killers who take pride in dispatching their foes with the minimum effort. It is said that a fully trained executioner knows the way to kill any creature with but a single blow, whether by decapitation, disembowelment, or a single thrust through the heart. There are heartless murderers who see their role as a sacred one, and unlike the Dark Elves, do not make much sport of their victims, killing them swiftly and keenly. It can take decades for an executioner to perfect his chosen strike. To judge precisely the angle of the blow and how the blade might be deflected or otherwise cheated by splinters of bone. Every executioner carries a dreitch, the ceremony weapon of his calling. Each dreitch is forward by his wielder under the supervision of the armors of Cain. As an executioner learns his bloody skills, he also refines his weapons so that the two are as one. Some executioners prefer a heavy axe like blade, others a slender sword, depending upon their own abilities and preferred method of killing. Regardless of design, these weapons are fearsome in battle, able to cleave through armor, flesh, and bone with a single flawless place strike. The executioners are the guards and foot soldiers of the temple, and can be filled in in relatively large numbers when brought to war. 
They are a fearsome sight and possibly your last if you ever meet them on the field of battle. The next members of the Temple of Cain do not quite fit into the hierarchy and are seen as almost a separate branch of the temple. Cainite assassins are masters of a subtle and murderous magic, trained from infancy to be a chosen warrior of Cain. They move silently and with a precision that surpasses even the standards of other elves. Blindfolded, an assassin can walk sure-footedly across the spear of an embattled phalanx, or strike a precise flurry of blows so that each cut exploits a different weakness of armor or flesh. The Cult of Cain hires out its assassins to the rulers of Nagaroth in exchange for sacrifices, wealth, and political favor. Though the price is high, the assassin's skills are such that there is a constant demand for their services. Many assassins ply their deadly trade in the Dark Elf cities, eliminating their employers' comp competitors and aiding in coups against their ruling families. Some are hired by admirals of Black Arcs to train corsairs or sow terror amongst the targets of their raids. Assassins are also often employed to ensure loyalty amongst the Dreadlord's regiments, such as an assassin's skill at mimicry and concealment that the troops he accompanies usually remain wholly ignorant of the infiltrator within their rank. The uncertainty this causes helps to keep rebellion to a minimum, for no Dark Elf can be absolutely certain with who he is conspiring. Assassins are masters of using poison, and they coat their weapons with a variety of toxins. Some are deadly, others paralyze or stupefy their victim. One scratch from some of these poisons is enough to send a man into agonizing convulsions or make his nerves burn. His heart explodes or his bones crack and shatter. The assassins take great pleasure in the awful demises of their victims and can keep prisoners alive for many days. Often they can extract infestions and information from captives much more quickly than the crude tortures used by other Nagarathi interrogators. The canine assassin is the most common form of interaction outside of special ceremonies and battles that the average Drew Chi will ever come into contact with, as they are a fundamental part of society, where killing your rivals is not so frowned upon in most cities, and they work for gold and often have either cut out their own tongue or use some dark method to ensure that their clients' secrets are safe with them. It is of note that the assassins are chosen as babies, similar to how the witch elves are chosen, See, they are thrown into the cauldron of boiling blood as sacrifices to Cain. But occasionally, they live, and it is then that, that they are taken into the Assassin's Order and formally trained from birth to be an emissary of the Bloody-Handed God. The Assassins are in fact taught rudimentary magic, but this is a closely guarded secret as the law forbidding male practitioners is not superseded by the Temple, and therefore if they are caught using magic, they will suffer the same fate any other Druchi would. All the more reason to not get caught, and indeed catching an assassin is next to impossible as they are trained to fight to the death instead of be captured. The assassins are both prestigious and feared organizations by both the people of Nagarathi and many members of even the temple. It is said that the Druchi assassins are the best in the Warhammer world, and they might be. It is all a matter of speak squeak perspective? <laughs> Uh, that is the Cult of Cain in a nutshell, along with many of the units from their army roster. Now, all of the units that I listed above, um, members of the uh, Cult, will actually be included in Total War Warhammer, sadly without Krohn Hellebron, um, but there's always the possibility of future DLC. Now, the Death Hags are going to be a melee hero unit, which can be mounted on a Cauldron of Blood, to add buffs to your witch elves and your army in general. Um, canine assassins will be assassins, of course. A ranged hero with good melee stats, functioning similar to the witch hunter we currently have, but with much better killing potential for lord and hero sniping. Now we are also getting both the witch elves and the executioners. The witch elves have no armor, they're literally naked. With uh, They'll be dual wielding blades and they will do poison damage. They will thoroughly tear through lightly armored infantry and skirmishers, assuming they don't get shot to pieces before they get there, as will be their greatest weakness. The executioners are going under the name of Harganath Executioners, it's kind of a mouthful, and are heavily armored great sword infantry, good for armor piercing. And with that final detail, I am closing this out. Make sure to like and subscribe for future content, including future lore videos. Check out some of my uh, game videos while you're at it.
I have been Jumbo Thick. Thanks for your support, and I will see you guys in the next one.